guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about key value observing. Key value observing is an extremely powerful topic in iOS. Uh, it allows you to observe changes on objects from other objects. So think of going back to the examples of videos that we've done uh, already, like Notification Center. It's a way to pass information between objects, notify other objects in your application that things are changing. So think of the classic uh, example of a user um, that maybe changes his name, maybe changes some more information about their user profile, and you want the rest of your app to be notified. Uh, it could be as simple as that. It could be something like maybe the user went into the settings and changed a theme, you know, from a dark theme to a light theme, you know. So the entire app needs to be notified of that change that is taking place. Uh, so let me walk you guys through how I approach KVO. KVO is a hard topic. So if you've got to rewatch the video, I understand, you know, it, it is, it, it took me some time to even understand it. But once you understand that basically, if you declare your properties as, as observable, they can be observed by others. So just keep that in mind as we go through this. Uh, let's import foundation. We'll create a class called, let's just make that example I was talking about, user. We'll make it adhere from or subclass of NS object. Uh, the first thing we want to do is let's uh, just have a name on this guy, which is a string. Um, and uh, let's have an initializer. Uh, we don't need to override. Uh, we can just say we'll set this with a user name which will be a string and we'll say uh, super dot in it in here, satisfy our super. We'll call self user, or I'm sorry, self name equal with username like this. Okay, awesome. Uh, how do we make this observable? Right now it's not. Uh, we need to add something called dynamic uh, in front of this, um, this property. I believe there's no limitation to what kind of properties can be dynamic. I believe strings, arrays, integers, floats, uh, booleans can all be dynamic. Um, somebody please correct me if wrong, but I'm almost pretty sure anything can be technically dynamic. Uh, and if you uh, click on dynamic, oh, we may not get anything because we don't have the reference here in this playground. Uh, but yeah. Um, and let's just make this optional to get rid of this error. Awesome, so we have our observable instance, right? We wanna observe the username or the name change. Uh, so let's say, how do we do that? So let's have another object. Let's, we'll call this a user manager. And uh, this will have to be of NS object as well. Anything that's observable or we're using KVO observers, gotta use uh, NS object. So let's have an instance in here of a user that we're gonna observe. And this will be of our user. We'll have an initializer. Again, don't need to override this. Uh, and we'll say uh, with user, and this will be of type our user. So we'll pass it a user as we're observing. And uh, as soon as we do that, we'll just call self.user equal to our with user. And we'll satisfy our super init here. So, and then we're gonna add um, <clears throat> an observer to our user objects so that anytime our instance of user that we're watching, right? This user manager is watching this instance, uh, changes uh, its name, we can take action on it. And so how do we do that? We call self.user, which is our user object that, and we're gonna add an observer to it. And we're gonna use our self, our user, as the object that's changing to observe. And we're going to observe a key path here. Um, and this is an objective C thing. Uh, what is a key path? Well, the key path is essentially in this case going to be our user object or our user class and its uh, object, which is, or it's a property, pardon me, that, which is name. So we'll just say user.name like that. For options, we get a few. We can uh, observe new changes, old changes, prior changes, initial changes. Let's do new because we want to see what changes. Um, and we need an unsafe mutable raw pointer. This is going to be a place in memory that contextually holds the, uh, the reference to uh, this dynamic change. So we'll just create a private variable here, which will be, uh, we'll call this my context. I think they call it my context. And we'll just make this uh, zero. This can be really anything, but it just uses it for the reference pointer. Uh, so it can be a string, if, even if you wanted it to be. 
Um, and uh, let's pass in with an at, or a, sorry, an ampersand, um, the my context, right? So it, it recognizes and registers it as a pointer, okay? Awesome. Uh, now, how do we observe changes uh, to this value, right? Well, in this object has a method um, somewhere probably deep in here. This is the protocol, but uh, if I go here in this object, I believe, let's see, observe value. Let's see, observe. Okay. We've got our add observers, and there is a function, not remove observers. Where is it? Remove observers. Observe value, I guess, um, is what we're looking for, which should be this one. Here it is. So function observe value for key path informs the observing object that the value specified of the key path relative to the observe object has changed. OK, we're going to use that. So we'll say observe value, and it's going to override it because there is a default implementation on the NS object. That's why it asks for the override. Uh, and we get passed in a key path, which is a string, which we specified here. This basically boils down to a raw value, but we can specify a string in here if we wanted to and then evaluate on that key path string. Or we can use the context object, which is the memory pointer and the unsafe mutable pointer. I think that this is a more accurate way to do it instead of using this string path because strings change, people make mistakes, other developers come in and change it. It happens. Um, so we're going to say if context uh, equals uh, our context. Uh, I'm sorry, equals our, um, <clears throat> our, our context pointer, uh, then let's, for right now, in just this trivial example, we'll print the value has changed. Okay. Awesome. So now that we've got this, let's create our objects. So we'll say new user, which is our user, right? which is of some type user with its implementation and initializer. And we'll say this is Bob, not knob, but Bob. Cool. All right. Uh, and let's create a instance of our manager so we can uh, observe the changes. So this will be user manager Oops. with a user, which we'll say is our new user. OK. So. <clears throat> If, uh, if we change now, for example, if I change new user, right, to name, we should get this to print. Let's see what happens. So I'll say new user name equal to now Ben. Let's see what happens. Boom. The value has changed. Interesting, right? So this object was notified via an observer that was attached to this object, right? Because this one is, if you think about it, it's like a radio station tower that's constantly listening, okay? Um, for changes to the object and notified us that it's changed. Now in the context of this being a bigger, you know, or you know, some sort of application that we're working on, we obviously wouldn't print the value has changed. We'd modify our model or change, you know, somehow our server or update our, our, our server, um, letting it know that the user has changed their name. You know, if this was, like I said, going back to the original example, it's a theme that's changing. Maybe we changed from light to dark. Uh, but what else is cool here is um, the context uh, and the change. We can actually, I think I can do uh, if name changed equals our change. Uh, I'm sorry, if let name changed equal change. And it wants uh, something in here. I'm going to pass in new key uh, because it, it wants this NS value key changed. Let's see if we could actually get this to print out our new value. So how do we do that? We'll just print the name changed. Uh, and I might need to cast this as a string but let's see if we can get the name change that we changed from into. And value NS key change is unwrapped. Do you mean to use 
blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's force cast it for a second. And I'll actually take this out. And let's just print our name changed as a string. No. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, I see why. Okay. I believe it wants this here because it's optional. And let's try that. And then let's try name changed like that. Ah, yes, we changed to Ben. So yes, because it's returning uh, a dictionary that essentially is, it, it's an optional changed dictionary, right? I mean, it's value changed key of type any. That's why uh, we have to specify this question mark, just similarly like we would in a table view or collection view for you know parsing indexes or items at indexes. Um, but yeah, so essentially we can make or enact changes on this. Um, and I bet if we say, you know, maybe like what was the old key, we could even see the old key in here as well. Um, but I'll leave you with that. If you guys have questions, let me know. This is a challenging, hard topic to understand. I, I know uh, I tried to break it down right now in this brief trivial example I made just off the top of my head uh, as, as to make it as easy and digestible as possible. But again, if you have questions, let me know. All right.